This is part two of video five. In this video lecture, we're going to talk about nuclear stability. Nuclear stability. Okay. Um, as it turns out, some isotopes are less stable than others. And it has been found that the stability has something to do with the ratio of neutrons to protons in the nucleus. Just like, as we'll see later in the semester, some atoms are more stable based on the number of electrons they have outside the nucleus, some nuclei are more or less stable depending on the number of neutrons and protons they have in their nucleus. This is a graph called the band of stability. It gives us a look at the relative stability of different isotopes of different elements. The graph is a plot of neutron number versus atomic number. And remember, atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus. And here, they're talking about the number of neutrons in the nucleus. So if you look at this plot, the blue dots are the most stable uh, isotopes of any given element. The uh, horizontal axis here, for example, horizontal axis on 10 would stand for the atom that has 10 protons, so that would be neon. And the most stable isotope of neon, if you go over here, is the one, the blue dot matches up to the 10 over here, so that would be the particular isotope that has 10 neutrons. So that would be neon 20. And then you, the other isotopes of neon would be less stable, and they're indicated here with the red dots. So the blue dots are the most stable isotopes, the red dots are the less stable isotopes, or the unstable isotopes of any given element. Now, what happens is the um, isotopes that are above the band of stability, and again the band is the blue dots, have a tendency to undergo beta emission. When an isotope undergoes beta emission, remember, a neutron is converted to a proton and a beta particle, or you can draw it as a beta, or you can draw it as an um, electron, either one, um, give, is given off. So that's the beta particle, right? The high energy electron is the beta particle. So by doing that, the isotope is becoming more stable because it's reducing its neutron to proton ratio. Down low um, on the lighter elements, the more stable isotopes are the ones that have about a one to one neutron to proton ratio. As you uh, move along, um, the elements in general become uh, less stable, but the more stable ones are the ones that um, are in the middle of this band of stability. Um, let's see what else. The uh, element, or the excuse me, the isotopes that fall under the band of stability have a tendency to um, undergo radioactive decay by alpha emission, um, and by doing this, they change their um, pro neutron to proton ratio to become more stable as well. So, um, and as it turns out, any um, element that is of um, atomic number 84 or greater, it has no stable isotopes. So once you get up to the very heavy elements, they have no stable isotopes. And you can see there's no more blue dots from this point forward. All right, so there's a lot of information um, in this band of stability plot, but what I wanted to do is tell you why some isotopes tend to spontaneously undergo radioactive decay. It's because they're unstable. And there's different types. There's also positron emission or electron capture, which are other ways that um, isotopes will change, but we did not talk about in this class. Okay, so nuclear stable, the most stable have a, a neutron to proton ratio of about one, and then this is how they decay, as I just told you, by uh, beta emission or alpha emission is the most popular way that an isotope of an element will try to become more stable. And here's a radioactive decay series. Uh, these unstable isotopes, the heavier ones in particular, tend to not just undergo one step of radioactive decay, but the isotopes that are uh, a result of the 
radioactive decay themselves are in turn unstable and they will continue to undergo radioactive decay. And this is just an example of the uranium-238 radioactive decay series. This is where you start. You start up here with uranium-238. Um, and uranium-238 is an unstable isotope. It will undergo alpha decay, which means giving off a little helium nucleus, to give thorium-234, which will then um, undergo a radioactive decay itself to give off beta emission to form protactium. It is unstable. Protactium-234 It will undergo beta emission to give uranium-234, etc., etc. Here's uh, radium. And here's radon. A radon is a gas. This is the source of radon. Uh, radon gas comes as a decay product from uranium-238. Uranium-238 is found in rocks. And um, as it undergoes radioactive decay, one of the decay products is radon-222. That's a gas, and that gas can seep out of the earth and cause problems for people. We'll talk more about that later. Um, it, the, the decay continues all the way down to lead, um, which has an atomic number of 82, and lead is stable, lead 206 is stable, and the radioactive uh, decay series ends there. Okay, so um, here's some examples of some nuclear decay processes. You'll have to make some adjustments here. The delta symbol didn't translate well when I was um, converting this document, but here's just a beta decay of carbon-14 and the point of me showing you this is to show that upon this radioactive decay, similar to when we have a nuclear fission, we do have some loss of mass across the change. And the change in mass is negative 2.8 times to the negative 31 kilograms. And if you um, use your uh, Einstein's famous equation um, equating matter and energy, you'll see the change in energy equals the change in mass times the speed of light squared. For um, one mole of uh, carbon-14 undergoing beta emission, uh, negative 1.5 times 10 10th joules of energy is given off. Or in other words, it's an exothermic 1.5 times 10 to the 10th joules um, is given off. Here's a nuclear decay process alpha decay. And again, I apologize for the typos here. I'm fixing them. Um, in this, the uranium-238 is undergoing alpha emission. Again, we have a loss of mass across the change, negative 7.6 times 10 to the 30. That mass is converted to energy according to Einstein's favorite famous matter equating energy equation. And for one mole of uranium-238, uh, you'll give off uh, 4.1 times 10 to 11 joules. That's a lot of energy given off um, as well as particles, uh, high energy particles being given off. Okay, and so again, just to remind you, the nuclear change versus chemical change, which is what we've been talking about. Here's a fission reaction. Here's a combustion reaction. This is TNT. This is uranium-235, a common um, fissionable fuel used in nuclear power uh, reactors. What we've learned so far is that energy is given off. Um, across both of these changes, but way more energy is given off in the nuclear change because we can actually see a mass differential across the change, and that mass, that matter, is converted to energy. So this one gram of uranium-235 will give off about the same amount of energy as 330, or excuse me, 33,000 tons of TNT. In the next video, we will talk about the biological effects of these types of uh, nuclear decays and nuclear reactions.